Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Polly Michelle, and I appreciate you clicking in to watch this video today. Um, today, I'm going to continue on my NCLEX series um, just to talk to you a little bit more about my process and what I went through um, on this NCLEX journey. Um, so, this video is going to be all about. Um, my application process with the South Carolina Board of Nursing. Once you complete your requirements for school, you're going to be endorsed and you'll receive an endorsement. So my school made us aware of this process and said that we needed to go on the South Carolina Board of Nursing website and we needed to apply. We need to like um, apply to take our, our licensure test or it was like apply to get a license by examination is what it's actually called. So, um, we, you know, we got the information to go ahead and do that like hmm, maybe two months, two, three months before we were going to graduate. They said go ahead and do that. There is a lot of things that you have to get to the Board of Nursing so that they can approve your application to be licensed in that state. Um, it's like your your ID, your proof of address, your birth certificate. They need a picture of you, a passport picture. On you know, it's it's just certain things that they have to have. Um, there's a paper that has to be notarized. It's just like really a whole list of things that you have to do. So my school gave us that information in advance, um, about three months before we were going to be completed the program so that we can go ahead and start getting that done. Well, I did that, um, and then school ended, and I was waiting on my endorsement. My endorsement was sent. So in this application, they ask you a whole lot of questions about yourself. One of the questions was, do you have a criminal background? So I, being excited about nursing, <laughs> Being excited about completing the program, read over the question, but misunderstood the question and answered the question wrong. In doing, in, in answering this question wrong, it cost me a lot. There is a question on this application that asks you if you have a criminal history. And then it says in parentheses, do not include minor violations such as traffic violations. So, I assumed that they only wanted felonies. The way I read into the question, it made me feel like they only wanted you to list whether you had a felony conviction on there. So, I said, no, I didn't have a criminal history. Now. I have had traffic violations and I have had a criminal um, history, a, a, an arrest when I was younger for shoplifting, which was not my fault. I was guilty by association, but it's still on my record. So when they said minor, because that, that um, was a misdemeanor, and when I signed up for the military, that was supposed to be expunged. So I was under the impression that that was not even there. You know, I've had plenty of jobs in the healthcare field where um, they had to do sled background checks, and I've ne that has never come up before. So I assumed that it was expunged. Well, it was not expunged. It was on there. So, you know, I didn't know I read the question wrong. I didn't know I answered the question wrong until there is a, like, you can continue to log into your account to see the progress of your application. Like, they will have different parts on there where it will say accepted, 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 or pending. So, none of my stuff was being accepted, and I was like, what the heck is going on? Like, this is taking so long. And all my friends, we were, you know, all my school friends, we were in a group chat, and they had already, like, you know, had everything showing um, approved, 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 except me. I did not get any of that. So I was like, oh, no, something's wrong. And it had been so much time passed, like over 10 days. So one of my um, classmates was like, you should call them. So I called them. 
you know, and they told me, oh, we're still verifying your account. Okay, so I got an email from one of the uh, persons on the board stating that I answered no, I did not have a criminal history when they ran my background check and they found something on my history, which was, was the shoplifting charge. But they didn't tell me what the charge was. They just said um, they found something on on your in your history and they gave you like a link where you could go get your own report. But I knew that that was the only issue that I had. So I was like, oh my God, that thing is still on there. You know, the email said that I had to write out a summary or some sort of description letting them know why, what my criminal, what this arrest was, why I answered the question wrong, why I told them no when it was yes. So I was like, oh my God, this is it. They're not going to let me test. They're going to think that I lied. They're going to think that I intentionally lied. So, and that they weren't going to catch. Like, why would I think that, I told her, I said, why would I think that you wouldn't catch me? Like, you, I had to go get my fingerprints done. For this, to, to take the, what, uh, a part of the list of stuff you have to do, you have to go get a background, you have to pay for a background check, and you have to go get fingerprints. So, if I had been previously arrested, it would have came up from my fingerprints, not only my name. And, you know, I was not trying to deceive them. But, you know, I had to write out this explanation. Oh, my God. I was so scared that they were going to say to me, you're not going to be able to test in this state because you have a criminal record. You lied. And I was scared. So, um, I wrote out the email to her explaining to them and just reassuring the board that I not did not intentionally try to defraud them. I did not intentionally try to mislead them, but yet I, I, I read the question wrong. I thought it was only for felonies, and I felt like the, the charge that I had was a minor offense because it was not even like a large amount of money. So I was like, oh my gosh, they're not going to. So, so, so much more time went by, guys. I was sitting there and I was like, oh my God, so much more time went by and I was scared because I had already accepted employment and I was supposed to, I had a start date. So I was trying to get my authorization in enough time so that I could test. So what I was trying, what I did was I just studied. I just studied and studied and studied the whole time I was waiting for my authorization I studied and said to myself, like, as soon as they give me permission to test, I'm going to schedule my test, like, the next available date. Because I've wasted so much time. Like, I finished school, I lie, April 29th was when we finished school. So, I didn't get authorized to, um, to test until May 28th. May 28th. And mind you... I had already done my stuff, not two months in advance, but I waited because I was like, let me make sure I'm going to finish before I pay. Because you have to pay $90 to register and apply, and apply this application. It's a $90 fee. So I wanted to make sure I was going to finish before I went on ahead and paid this $90. Because the application is only good for 30 days. Unless you're, in, maybe if you're in like a pending status. So, I, well, incomplete, let's say that incomplete applications are only good for 30 days. So, I wanted to wait and make sure. So, I waited. And when I got to my class and knew that I was going to pass this last class, I went on ahead and did started sending in everything and I paid my $90. So, I didn't want to waste any time. I had already had, like, all this time. So, I assumed that I was going to get authorized quicker as soon as they got my endorsement but this situation with this criminal history question really pushed me back so like I said they sent out our own I think I got an email May 5th or 6th saying that they sent out our endorsement and I did not get um, an authorization to test until May 28th so I was like oh my god oh my god it's crazy so the next date when I went to Pearson View to schedule the next date was June 6th so I, I took that date. I was like, 
I took the date. I took that date and scheduled to take my test that day. So that gave me about a week more to study. So I took that time and I just started doing questions. I just kept doing tests and tests and tests. And I will show, tell you guys um, how I studied. And then I will also show you on my computer as well how I studied. So this is going to be, um, a, the next part in this series is going to be like how I studied for the NCLEX. But I wanted to just talk to you guys about that. Because if you have a criminal history... Please answer that question honestly. Give them a write out a description of why and what happened. And it also says to, to include any kind of court document. So if you have anything, anything from the court showing your innocence, showing how things went on, any descriptions or um, any transcript of testimonies or anything like that, Make sure you include as much as possible because once they received my email, they had to go and meet, the board had to meet to determine whether I could test or whether I could still be licensed in, in, in the state with this charge on my, on my record, which was not a big deal. But I mean, some of us, some of you may have something bigger than what I had. So just think about that, you know. And then they said that if it may have been possible that I may have had to come to the board and see the board in front of the board for them to see me and feel me out. And I was like, oh my God, please tell me I don't got to do all of that for no shoplifting. I can see if I committed fraud or murder or something. Shoplifting? <laughs> anyway, it is what it is. And it's their choice. They hold your future and they determine what you can and cannot do. Yes, you may be able to just go to another state and test. That's fine too. But why cause all that trouble? Just get your paperwork together now. If you are going to be testing for the NCLEX, get that stuff together now. If it is possible to get anything expunged off your record, I would look into that now. So that way when they pull your credit history, it's not even there. I am going to get those things expunged off my credit because, I mean, I'm not my, not my credit. What am I talking about? I'm going to get those things expunged off my um, criminal history because they're, they're not valid. They do not show my character. I was like 16 years old at the time with the wrong person at the wrong time, not knowing what their intentions were and what they were going to do. But because I was there, I was guilty by association. So I just wanted to let you guys know the story and encourage you to get things in order because you don't need any surprises. You've already finished your program. You've studied hard. You've worked hard on your program. You don't need anybody taking all of those years and throwing it away, telling you because of a mistake that you have made in your past that you cannot take the test. That's not fair to you and it's not fair that your school would not have brought that to your attention um, I know that my school, a part of the application process, we had to do a background check. And if we had certain things on our background, they would not accept us, which is good. Because that lets me know that if they don't accept me with this on my, on my uh, criminal history, then I know that the Board of Nursing doesn't accept that. And that's why they're not accepting me. They are doing you a favor and not a disservice. Do not get upset with them. They are doing you a favor. Because if you completed that entire program and could not test and get licensed, oh, that would be a very bad day in my house. So um, what I would do in that situation is go ahead and get those things expunged, then apply. You know, and if they, and if it is your history, ask them. Say, like, what is it on my criminal history that, that disqualifies me from being a nurse? Ask someone, you know, and if they say this charge, then you go and try to get that charge taken off. You do what you got to do to get it off. Because, like, this is your future and you only have this chance, you know. Um, things are not promised. And things are not guaranteed to us. But we have to be proactive in certain situations when we're warned. So, like I said, um, thank you, guys, for chiming in, watching this video. If you're not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. We're on our road to building this family. To, so we can have like larger, larger, and um, comment down below, please, um, so we can get some dialogue going on. I want to connect with you guys. I want to get 
on a personal level with y'all. 